The following presentation was recorded at the Newbury Buddhist Monastery, Victoria, Australia. Please visit our website at nbm.org.au. Mano Bangama Dhamma Mano Setta Mano Maya Mano Sache Padute Nabha Sativa Karotiva Tato Nang Dukkamang Veti Chakkang Vavahato Padang Mano Bhum Pangama Dhamma Mano Setta Mano Maya Mano Sache Pazane Nabha Sativa Karotiva Tato Nang Sukkamang Kamang veti chaya vana paini. Very good. Right. Here we go again. During this meditation broadcast, I hear that the audio levels are good, so that's great. Today's uh, another cold night here in Newbury. It's uh, nice to be inside, nice and cozy and warm. I was just uh, doing a little chanting. Uh, I was asked to do maybe chanting so we can check the audio levels. I really like the Dhammapada and uh, those are the I was chanting. I'm not sure if you heard, heard the chanting, but it was just the first two verses of the of the Dhammapada, I like those two verses, but um, actually today what I want to do is something different. Um, and Dhammapada is, uh, I was just talking uh, with somebody on, we had a meeting here on Sunday and they said, oh Dhammapada, you know, as lay people we try to read the Dhammapada and it's so boring. Uh, you just fall asleep when you try to read these some of these Dhamma books. And so it's true, quite often it might might be a bit boring to read, uh, especially if you try to read Dhammapada page by page, it gets boring. But once in a while Dhammapada helps you, it helps you to bring the awareness on something and that's what those short verses were meant for. The short verses in Dhammapada weren't long teachings which were meant to give you a lot of information but they're supposed to be there to uplift you from the current mind state. Um, today as I quite often a lot of our lives been busy and we we think we have important things in life and sometimes those important things take over our life we run around as if they were truly important one thing which stops us or Or it's a good and it's a good contemplation is death. Sure, it's a bit of a morbid subject, and but it's hard to stop sometimes. If you just say something, if you have a little instructions about, oh, just let it go. It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. You can't just drop it. You think it is a big deal. A lot of these things in our lives, they are big deals. Somebody abused us. Somebody told us something we didn't like. It rubs into our ego. And it could be also the opposite. Something goes well, it up uplifts your mind but it also 
makes your ego bigger. You think you did it. It's because of you. Sometimes it's good to deflate that big ego a little bit. It's not, usually we don't recommend that too much. Usually we already not over the moon all the time. So if things go well, just enjoy those moments. Learn how to enjoy them. We don't really put those things down. But if anything, death contemplation makes us sit down and think, is this really that important? So in the Dhammapada, um, there's a verse 3 and 4. Obviously, um, Dhammapada is poetry, so it's hard to translate poetry. But I just read a little bit here and there about what the Buddha says about death. And then hopefully that will stop you a little bit, stops your habitual mind, stops your busyness of your, of your life. So we can meditate tonight. These things are always trying to take you away from the world, take you away a little bit into this seclusion. And then when you secluded a little bit from the world, then the mind starts coming down. It's not grasping into all those things. It does. It takes away the value from all those things you think that you regard highly. So let me read a little bit here. He abused me. He beat me. <clears throat> he defeated me. He robbed me. In those who harbor such thoughts, hatred is never appeased. <clears throat> He abused me, he beat me, he defeated me, he robbed me. In those who do not harbor such thoughts, hatred is appeased. Hatred never cease through hatred in this world. Through love alone they cease. This is an eternal law. The others know not that in this quarrel we perish. Those of them who realize it have their quarrels calmed. So people who realize that we will all die, they will end their quarrels. They will let them go. They realize it's not so important. So, now I read a little bit more about actually what the Buddha says about death. Let's see if I can find the, if I can find the chapter. Okay. Malavagga. And let me say this before I go any deeper. This is, like I said in the beginning, it's not meant to be morbid. Don't, if you have... mind coming up, which is fear, a little bit of fear is okay, but if you feel that you cannot take it, that's fine, you can just, you stop meditating on the, on the death contemplation, you don't have to do this, and don't think this is very morbid, this, like I said, supposed to just l let the things which you think are important, they just, they should just drop away. The death contemplation stops you a little bit on the tracks. It will calm your mind a little bit. We will go into a little bit more into just normal guided meditation afterwards. But l let me read a little bit more about death. You are now you are now like a withered leaf. The messengers of death are near you. 
you're about to set out on a long journey, yet you have no provisions for the journey. These were one of the Buddha's last words when he was dying. Make an island unto yourself, strive quickly, become wise, having removed impurities and being free from moral defilements, you shall enter the abodes, abodes of the areas. Your life has come to an end now, to the presence of death you are setting out. You cannot stop on the way, yet you have no provisions for the journey. Make an island unto yourself, strive without delay, become wise, become wise. Having removed impurities and being free from all moral defilements, you will no longer be subject to rebirth and decay. Here will I live for the rainy season. Here will I live for the cold season and hot season. So imagines the fool, not realizing the danger of approaching death. These and the next two verses will be the last ones which I read. And these are famous verses. These are two famous ladies who were... Um, both of them became nuns. Other one is Kisakotami, another one is Patachara. Very famous verses from Dhammapada. The man who dotes on his children and his herds of cattle, whose mind longs for and is attached to sensual pleasures, is carried away by carried away by death, even as a sleeping village is swept swept away by the great flood. Kisakotami had come to Buddha as she was stricken with grief to the death of her only son. The Buddha said, Kisakotami, do you think you are the only one who has lost son? Death comes to all beings. Before their desires are, sat sati are satisfied, death takes them away. She was consoled consoled by the Buddha's advice. And this one is for the Patachara. There are no sons for one's protection, neither father nor even kinsmen. For one who is overcome by death, no protection is to be found among kinsmen. Realizing this fact, let the virtuous and wise person swiftly clear way that leads to Nibbana. As Patachara has, had lost her husband and her two sons, as well as her parents and only brother, almost at the same time, she was driven near insanity. When she approached the Buddha, he cons and consoled her. Patachara, sons and daughters cannot look after you. Even if they are alive, they don't exist for you. The wise observes morality, sila, and clears the obstac obstacles to the path leading to Nibbana. This way the Patachara managed to overcome her sorrows to comfort the comforting words of the Buddha. Very good. So, like I said, Dhammapada, if you read it like a book, it's boring. But if you try to find inspiration from it, that's the good, it's a good source for it. Death comes to all of us. There's no escaping from it. If we don't have provisions to, for this journey, we're lost. What are the provisions? What did the Buddha say mean by being an island to yourself?
Be heedful, the Buddha said. Meditate. Meditate like your turban was on fire, the Buddha said somewhere. Don't waste time. End your quarrels, end your hatreds. Have kindness and love in your hearts. So now we start looking for the provisions We start digging deep into the mind, letting it calm down. So as always in the beginning of the meditation, please take a relaxed seat. So if you were on the edge of the seat, Thinking about the upcoming death. Ah, don't worry about it. Sure, someday we all die. But most days, most days, none of us dies. So we're okay. Just relax. Relax. Just look at your body with your mind's eye. Is there anything you can do to make it more comfortable? Make sure your cushion is nice and right place. Nice and soft, sitting down. Just stretch out. We have a little bit of time to gather the provisions for the journey. We have nowhere to go nothing to do nowhere to go nothing to do Just think of your body like a soft bundle of clay. If there's any hard spots anywhere in that clay, just go gently scanning your body and if you find that tight spot make sure it becomes part of that big lump the lump of your body pushing down on its own weight Pushing down into the seat or cushion.
It's nice to sit down here. Oh, it's so nice. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go. Leave all your attachments behind. Just feel your body. It's almost like a breathing bag of organs and bones. This vehicle keeps us going every day. Now let it relax. Relax the whole body. Relax, relax. Let your body be nice and soft. Heavy. Out breath, you, every out breath takes away any hardness and it gets softer and softer. Relax. And in breath brings in Kindness and joy. Oh, how nice it is to sit down. How nice. Ah, oh, I can just sit here. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go. Now start looking your, like your body. It's a little bit afar. Like it's not your body. Start leaving it behind. Your body sits there, but it's not yours. Relax, relax, relax. can see the body there keeps itself erect you don't have to do anything 
The body just keeps breathing in and out. Relax. Let the body do the work. Just look at the breath. going in and out of that body. Relax, relax, relax. Let go. Leave behind. Don't worry about anything. Leave everything behind, but have the breath as your anchor that will anchor you into the softness. You can see how the breath. in and out, softly, softly,
Just repeat to yourself a few times with the breath. Relax. Relax. And the breath becomes soft. Softly it goes in and out, relax,
if you are sailing away, remember that your breath is your anchor. Don't go drifting along with the winds of the life. Where's the anchor? Where is it? Where's the breath? If the breath has disappeared and you're in this dark place, don't go for looking for anything, just relax, relax, relax. Maybe your eyes are not used to the darkness. Happiness will start arising if you let it, if not, let the breath be your anchor, just keep looking that with kind eyes. Going in and out, going in and out.
If your mind wanders around, just relax your body, relax. Relax your body to the max. Let it melt. Melt into the cushion. Give it kindness. Kindness to your body. And then let it go. Let it go, let it go. Let go the body again. And then again, the breath starts appearing. Relax, relax, relax. Let that soft breath be your anger again. Softly going in and out. In and out. Softly, kindly. Softly.
We have only few moments left on this meditation. Look at your mind. Stay a little bit more. Letting go. It's a little bit less attached to the world. Now look at your body, it's a little bit more relaxed, soft, gentle, notice how if you let your body be, It heals itself. Don't carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, in your stomach, on your chest. There are those who don't realize that one day we all must die. But those who realize that end their quills. Hatred is never seized by hatred in this world. By love alone, hatred is ever ended. Very good. Thank you, everybody. I hope you heard me talking. I it was very soft today, but thank you. Hopefully, you heard. I we see you again. Sadu, sadu, sadu.